Secularism.org has some fantastic new findings coming out of the UK. They say research by the National Center for Social Research has confirmed the long-term collapse in affiliation with the Church of England and the huge increase in non-belief. They say in 1983, Islam represented around half a percentage point of Britain's population, but in 2014, it had reached 5%. So there's been a big jump in Islam from 1983 until today. Uh, a lot of that, I believe, has to do with immigration. They say the percentage of non-religious people has increased from 31% in 1983 to 49% in 2014. Conversely, the share belonging to the Church of England has fallen from 40% to 17% over the same time period. That's amazing. So this means that, they continue, by far the single largest group of people is the non-religious. Based on estimates from the Office of National Statistics, there are 24.7 million non-believers in the UK. The next single highest group is Anglicans, which is people, that's the Church of England, uh, on 8.6 million. And also, let me say, that's actually a little misleading also, because, I mean, you want to talk about a liberal group of Christians. Anglicans are basically the polar opposite of evangelical Christians here in the U.S. or the dominionist Christians here in the U.S. or the fundamentalists. So these are people who, like, we covered the story, I think it was the head of the Anglican church came out like last year and was like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm just throwing this out there and stuff, but I'm an agnostic. <laughs> what the fuck? Head of a church is like, I don't believe. I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'm with it in that sense. That's the Anglican Church in a nutshell. It's cultural Christians. Yeah, I'm Christian, I believe in Christianity, but let's not <laughs> take any part of doctrine seriously. They don't even fucking cherry pick the good parts and say, we, we believe in the good parts. They're just like, eh, park that over here, and we're gonna go ahead and act in a secular way over here. So, to say that 49% are non-religious, and then you say that, what is it, 17% are Anglican, it's well over 50% are really non-believers, or non-believers in every functional sense, in terms of how you run the country and how people are involved politically. So this is fantastic news, man. It's fantastic news. And it's fantastic news because of the implications of it, but also because it's just truth. I mean, there's, you know, I like how oftentimes when people talk about uh, politics and how to run a country and and all those issues relating to it, we oftentimes just, like, truth is on the side of the road. It's like, eh, fuck that. Let's, functionality is more important than anything else, or feelings or emotions. No. We should also give a shit about what's correct, what's accurate. And if you have fewer people in your country believing in metaphysical, superstitious dogma, that's good because it's fewer people who essentially are believing the equivalent of Narnia, or the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Isn't that the same thing? I think it might be the same thing. Or Dr. Seuss, or Mother Goose, or the list goes on and on. The books aren't true. So to go to the books on any issue, really, to say, okay, how should I live my life? Ooh, you're making a bad mistake. Because, I'm going to put it bluntly here, you're living a lie. You're living a lie. Now, again, I get it. I'm not a stupid person. I'm not a bigot. If you want to say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Scientologist, I'm a Mormon, whatever, uh, and you cherry-pick the happy parts, fine. I still disagree with you, you're still wrong for believing the doctrine, but we're going to be able to run society okay because you're not injecting your irrationality into the system and trying to force your beliefs on others. But still, the ideal situation is for everybody to say, yeah, I, I don't believe in, in myths. I've decided to leave that behind. And there's no difference, there's no difference between the religions of today and, say, the Roman gods, or the Greek gods, or tribal gods that one would find in the Amazon, in the jungle. There's over 4,000 religions in existence today. But don't worry, I'm sure you were lucky enough to be born into the right one. No, you weren't. People, we gotta call this out, man. It's so overwhelmingly narcissistic. People say atheists and agnostics are narcissistic and arrogant. 
How narcissistic is it for you to say, out of 4,000 religions that exist today, I know I was born into the right one because I'm so special. The happenstance of my birth was true. I was born into the true religion, the one true religion. Everybody else is wrong or a liar or misguided or whatever. Or perhaps you're all fucking misguided. How's that for equality? You're all equally wrong. So this is a fantastic thing that we're moving in the right direction. We should continue to move in the right direction. And we can disagree with the ideas and the concepts and the doctrines. And people could attack us as bigots if they want. But that's not true. So that, that argument is not going to stick. I don't buy your dogma. In increasing numbers now, people are not buying your dogma in the UK. And the more time goes by and the more we spread this message of truth, the more people are going to go, you know, that's not a bad idea. And then once we do that, it's easier to build a system based on logic and reason and rationality and mutual understanding and empathy where we understand this isn't a, a, a practice run. We're not going to paradise in the sky afterwards to party with Marilyn Monroe and Elvis. So since this is quite possibly the only time we're conscious and sentient, how about we try to make it comfortable and happy and give everybody meaning and give people a shot at equal opportunity to build a life for themselves and have some level of luxury and love and family and happiness. If we drop the myths, that goal is much, much easier to achieve.